Okay, we're going to spend some time talking about uh, polar coordinates. Um, so we have a new um, coordinate system uh, as opposed to the Cartesian plane, uh, which is the one that we're used to, uh, where there's an X and a Y axis, um, typically called the um, rectangular coordinates. Um, because each point that you make, you go along the X axis and then you go up the Y axis, you're ostensibly making a rectangle here. Um, so-called rectangular coordinates as opposed to here we have the polar axis um, where you're um, as opposed to having an x and a y direction um, you have a uh, radius um, which notice you have concentric circles here representing the different radii uh, distance away from the pole as opposed to the origin uh, there really shouldn't be a diamond there but it looks like a diamond um, is um, because of all these um, different radii excuse me uh, uh, rays uh, meeting all at the pole here it makes it look like a diamond but it really should just be a point much like it is in the origins of point um, so you have all these different um, distances away from uh, the pole and then you have all these different angles so notice here are the classic angles that are come from the unit circle uh, pi 6 pi 4 pi 3 going all the way around um, so notice in this case um, each one of these uh, rays has a distance in between them of 15 degrees or pi over 12 uh, so this is pi 12s, and this is 2 pi 12s, which is the same as pi over 6. This is 3 pi 12s, which is the same as pi over 4. And 4 pi 12s is the same as pi over 3. And just keep it adding pi 12s or 15 degrees, however you want to look at it. And you have all these angles going all the way around. Um, so all of our angles are of the form, uh, some radii, and then some angle theta. Um, so a real simple one would just be if I had 2 comma pi over 6, um, well, here's my radius of 2, and then here's my angle pi over 6. So that would be that point right here. And you can hopefully see that there's um, a pretty strong correlation between the uh, Cartesian plane and the polar axis. Um, because if I was to draw any point on the Cartesian plane, I could draw a right triangle where I could determine how long this hypotenuse is, and we could just call it the radius. And I could determine what this angle is, theta. Um, and then we, uh, then I can just translate everything from being uh, the Cartesian plane into the polar plane, where again there's just a radius, and then there's a corresponding angle, uh, which is formed between this axis here, which is called the polar axis, uh, which tip which starts at the pole or the origin, and goes along the positive x-axis. Um, I can't usually on a lot of uh, polar graph paper this is in bold, but I can't make that. Um, so therefore, um, that's just the way it looks on my graph. Um, so just like um, any angle we do in the unit circle, um, you could have angles that go in the positive direction, which would be counterclockwise, and then obviously we could have negative angles, which go clockwise. I just didn't write those all out. And then obviously you could also have coterminal angles, meaning uh, adding 2 pi to those and getting all those other angles as well. So a lot of the same ideas that we did with the unit circle um, will also appear over here in the um, polar axis. But just that in here, there's only two things, your radius, the distance away from the pole, and then the corresponding angle, whether that angle is positive or negative, or it's a coterminal to one of these um, critical angles that we have here from the unit circle. So we'll spend some time talking about uh, graphing points on the polar axis, and then we'll convert from polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar, and then we'll talk about polar uh, functions as well as uh, converting from polar to rectangular and vice versa. And then we'll uh, later on, we'll spend some time graphing on the polar axis, um, where s sometimes things that we're used to seeing on the rectangular um, coordinate system will also appear on the polar system. So like lines, we can draw lines, uh, whether horizontal, vertical, or um, oblique, uh, oblique lines. Uh, I can draw those as well on the Cartesian, excuse me, as well as the polar axis, as well on the Cartesian plane. But then we can draw some more unique graphs that are a little harder to draw on the um, on the Cartesian plane. Um, so that's just a brief introduction to the polar axis. Things to keep in mind is there's always a radius and then there's a corresponding angle. Uh, it's always r theta in that order, much like x y is alphabetical. Uh, I think of it as r, and then this is theta, starts with a t, so r is before t, so therefore it's r comma theta. Um, though usually when I graph points on the polar axis, um, polar axis, excuse me, I um, usually find the angle first and then go out the uh, appropriate radius. So uh, that's a brief introduction to the polar axis. Um, we're going to spend some time now in the next video um, graphing some points.